Oscar Bevis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global here today at PWR Performance Enhancement Centre in Essex. Reluctantly, reluctantly. Very, reluctantly very reluctantly, Michael Burke, how are we? Not too bad, mate, not too bad. This place, um, it seems like every interview I've done today, I'm sort of waxing lyrical about this place, but when you walk in, you can see that it's top of, top of the yes. range. Yes, listen, it's, it's a phenomenal place for all the fighters, for all the athletes that are coming here. You can't ask for no more. You know, you've got your recovery in house. It's even got me training again. It took, took 10 years to get me to do a little bit again. So I'm even training there and all. But yeah, it's got everything you need. For an athlete, for a professional athlete, you've got everything you need under one roof. You ain't got to go nowhere else. And that's, that's, that's the attraction of it. Everything's here. And as well, when I came in, there was a good bunch of lads and they seem like they bounce off each other as well which obviously helps like when you go into places like Peacock and that you see it seems like they've sort of got that here as well yeah 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 I mean listen we, we, Adam and Ricky they help the boys out they like we're all treated like family here do you know what I mean everyone comes here and, and feels part of it which is good we all have a good laugh and a joke there's a lot of hard work being done here as well though don't worry about that but like I said you've got to have a little bit of fun while you're here you? you've got to have it yeah, because if you don't have fun, then... Uh... No, it's hard work, then, isn't it? It's just hard work, then. You need that little bit of fun just to, just to make it easier on yourself. It's hard enough being a fighter as it is. A little bit, a bit of smile on your face sometimes is nice, isn't it? And obviously, the boys preparing for that sort of post-coronavirus return oh, in boxing. Yeah, it's, all, it's, all, it's, all. it's annoying, isn't it? Because when something's boxing, when boxing sorry, is something that you live and breathe day in, day out, yeah, you don't yeah. mind a week off, two weeks, but yeah. it gets too far in and it's frustrating. Oh, it's terrible for everyone. I mean, like my son, Mickey Burke Jr., obviously... He's been out, he was due to on the first Dubois Joyce show, that was all meant to happen. Um, all my fighters were due out as a fight. And like I said, just everything's just pulled away from us. We've been sitting there twiddling our thumbs for, for months and months and months until like the government will finally give us the guidelines to go back. But again, there's no real secure dates with some of the big boys, Frank Brown and Eddie, are doing their things. But it's no real secure dates for the small all shows. So a lot of my fighters are really just still just training for nothing, really, with no date on the horizon or anything. I want to come on to them guys in a bit, but I want to talk about Mickey actually, because I did speak to him at like they had an undercard press conference for Joyce Dubois. Yeah. And uh, when you're free and oh, I said to him, Does it feel like you might have to make your debut again? Like it's a weird time for there to be a break from him. Yeah, it's like, listen, boxing's about momentum anyway. So like if he's got them, he had them three fights going into it, was a few booked in, he was ready to go, he got his Christmas out of the way and sort of thing's pulled off from underneath you. But my master like Mickey's he's He's been fighting since he was six years old. He's been in the gym since he's going to work him for another six months. He's only just turned 19. He's a baby in the sport. So a little six-month break really ain't going to hurt him too much. And he lives his body rest a little bit, let him recover. And so I think, it'd be, I think it does him all a lot of favour. The young kids, anyway, the older fighters is the one that's going to affect more, really. The young kids, they're all right. They can enjoy it, you know what I mean? I'm interested from your perspective what it's like having Mickey fighting, actually, because I speak, I speak to so many people and they've got kids are in and around boxing from a young age yeah. because they are I look at um, Kevin Lilly's son yeah, obviously yeah. doing his personal training I said to him would you want to get him into boxing and he was like nah stay as far clear as possible yeah yeah no to be fair it was it was, it was was Michael that got me back into boxing I'd done it when I was a kid but wasn't very successful and sort of <laughs> not at all really and ended up mucking around and playing about my life and it was only once I had him and he, he found a love for it again my, my, my dad boxed my uncle boxed and my family did so we all got him into it and he just loved it. And ever since then, they got me back into it. I'd done all my coaching courses again, done me the amateur thing together. And it was only when I, he got to 13, I stopped training him because it was a bit too much of a clash of personalities. <laughs> but no, nah, it's good. Listen, he's, he's kept him on the straight and narrow. He's, and he, he's a good kid from it. You know what I mean? We had no trouble with him all his life. He's always been polite, respectful of everyone and behaves himself. So, you know what I mean? So the boxing kept him on that straight and narrow, really. I can't ask. Yeah, and people need to realise that because it always seems like boxing gets a bad name. Why not teach it in schools? Why not do this and that? Because it keeps people disciplined and keeps them out of... I mean, the amount of boxers I've spoken to have said he's kept me off the streets. Even. I would say probably 90% of fighters have come from some sort of underprivileged sort of background and, and, and boxing has been their way out. They're a bit of structure in their life. They're a bit of, a bit of family that some kids crave, you know what I mean? And something where they can, they can achieve something. And having, it's not all about education. It's not all about things, but just that little bit of sporting success can obviously it can build confidence in a young kid and keep them on the straight and narrow for all the rest of their life. Let's talk about the boys that you work with. So, uh, Shaq Day, one of them. Uh, yeah. Obviously disappointing last time out, but and like you said about the return for boxing, because of the lack of shows, they're sort of getting out guys that people would consider as, you know, like your title holders, your main assets. So when you look at guys who might have come off the back of a loss, a tough yeah. time for someone like Shaq. Yeah, 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 extremely tough. I mean, after beating... Um, uh, Lewis Adolfo for the, for the southern area, we was flying, everything was going well and we booked him to fight Jez Smith, I think in the November, but then I did the shoulder injury, put him out for that. It was hard to really return, then Christmas come, 
so then she put a bit more weight on and whatever. It was such an hard camp to get him back to it. And didn't really, listen, no excuses. Casey Benjamin was a great fighter. I thought he boxed really well, really impressed me. Um, but it wasn't for me, it wasn't a shack that we know he could be. So I think, like I said, he needs now, like I said, a nice little warm up fight. Get come on under his belt, get a nice camp under his belt, get back into it. And then after one, we're straight back in the title fights, so hopefully, straight back into meaningful fights for him. But he's eager to do that and eager to prove everyone wrong. Jack, now, Jack Dempsey Eubank. He's got oh. the name, he's got the looks. Oh, well, actually, he didn't have the looks because last time I saw him, he had a like, two metre gash on his head. <laughs> yeah. How is he now? No, he's all right, he's all right, Jack. He's a lovely kid, Jack. You know what I mean? Um, he's come to me recently, but again, he's not really worried about dates and we haven't got a date, so just working on things in the gym. It's hard for the boys, like I said, there's no, if you haven't got any fixed dates of work to, to keep that consistency in the gym's hard. So we're just trying to keep everyone in the gym, keep everyone active, a little bit of sparring here and there, you know what I mean, just to keep them all ticking over. But you don't want to kill them in the gym at the minute because I say there's no date. So just want to keep them and get their weight down and get them into decent shape and we'll be all right. But yeah, Jack's a, he's a good kid, very naturally talented. I think if he gets a few more like tools under his belt, a bit more experience, a bit more better sparring here and there, I think it'll be all right. I think it'll be all right. He's all right for now sitting on his Harley Davidson uh, with yeah, his yeah, toes yeah, out yeah, and modelling. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. If it all fails, he can be a model, can't he? Don't worry about that. He's a good looking kid, isn't he? Even I fancy him, don't worry about that. <laughs> I'll send him that. Send him, um, I'll send him myself. Quick list of all the other boys you work with and sort of a, a summary of, I don't yeah. know, your situation, shall I say? Yeah, listen, me and Shaq started off together, so then we was up the eye box. Al Smith was like lucky, he, he let me in the gym and used the gym, and we worked under them for a long time. But I've got my own little stable now building. Um, I've got Ellis Soro, an unbeaten cruiserweight, 9 0. Um, fantastic talent, only had three amateur bouts, but really coming on as a pro. And like within, I'd say, another couple of fights, looking at some sort of southern area title for him, I'd say. Um, like the Albanian kid, Borum Ameti, um, hasn't boxed for six years. He had his debut in a golden contract for the MTK. Done really well. I was really ple pleased with him, really. You know, after six years out, not doing nothing. He's, after a few rounds, settled into it nicely, though. Again, plenty to learn, but another good. Uh, he'll do well in the sport. Um, Dini Mitchell, another little, um, my little mate. He's come off the unlicensed scene. Um, devastating puncher, I'll be honest with you. And it's, it's not the same as an uh, unlicensed as pro, but if we can control his, his, uh, his natural instincts to have a fight and try and lure him in a little bit, I think he can do something in the sport. Well, no, I, I think it'd be a little surprise package for everyone. I really do, I really do. Um, and also, we've also got Jamie Robinson, the Ginger Rocket. <laughs> so everyone knows about him. He, looking to want, he wants that British title um, at light like welterweight. And I think, like I said, with plenty of hard work, I think he can get there as well. So, yeah, exciting times. And that was the thing this year was looking to be a big year for, for my little stable. And it's sort of like we just got there and now it's stopped. So hopefully now we get back to the end of the year and we'll be right after that. I would say people don't realise the obviously, effect this had on small walks. But look, 2021, or the end of 2020 and 2021, yeah. we go again and uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, listen, and with this facility here, for all the boys to work with and use, I mean, they've got every chance of succeeding. With the right, with the right back in and all that, every chance of succeeding. So, yeah, I'd say a big 2021.